Behold, how to remaster the heavily requested God of War 2. In this video, I will explain why I choose to emulate the PS2 version over the PS3 version, go over graphic settings, texture pack options, and my preferred reshade setup. Keep in mind, I'm not claiming this is the best way nor the way you should play, but rather how I play. There will be choices I make that don't align with your preferences, but that's okay. Just use what you like, disregard what you don't. If you want to support the channel, like, subscribe, and hit the notification button, drop a comment, check my link tree, or back me on Patreon. And with that out of the way, let's look at how I play God of War 2. I don't choose to emulate the PS3 HD remaster for three reasons. RC PS3 doesn't support texture replacement, it's less convenient, and it doesn't look as good. Now, RPCS3 might support texture packs in the future, but for now, that is only available on PCSX2. It's not to say that RPCS3 is not a great emulator, because it is, it's just less mature and therefore less convenient. Setting it up, installing games, and tweaking settings is all more difficult and time-consuming without the reward of better visuals, because when I compare the two, PCSX2 looks better. There are a few things about the PS3 version I like, such as blood particle effects and some lighting, but overall I think emulating on PCSX2, particularly with texture packs, is far and away a better way to play. Before we tinker with any other emulator settings, make sure in the actual game options to enable widescreen and progressive scan. If you don't, you could waste time trying to figure out why the widescreen patch in PCSX2 doesn't prevent the image from being stretched, only to realize many swear words and hours later, it's because there is no widescreen patch. The game has a native option for it. That would be pretty dumb of you, and I definitely didn't do that. Profound sadness. Profound sadness. sadness. When you scale the resolution in interlaced mode, the image comes out blurry, but it can be cleaned up by checking anti-blur. However, when progressive scan is enabled, it negates the need for this in the first place and has a clearer image. The next wrinkle you may notice is when running the internal resolution anywhere above about 3 to 4x, you might run across this line that will occasionally appear. Just force a bilinear filtering and it should go away. The last tidbit I ran across is when using one of the texture packs, if blending actually accuracy was set to high or maximum, which is usually a good thing if your PC can handle it, I would encounter this really weird transparency issue. But by setting the blending accuracy to medium, it solved this issue for me. And that's that. Next is texture packs. Now, for God of War 2, there are many texture packs available, and I tested four different runs from the following authors. Black Hand, Panda Venom, XX, the Rocco XX, and Progetto God of War. Now, the first three are AI upscaled packs using different models, but the end result honestly is fairly similar. If you want to retain the original aesthetic of the game, albeit with sharper textures, any of these three will do the trick. The downside is you'll notice that that quote AI look is present here and there. However, it's minimal and in motion, I rarely noticed it. Now, the last texture pack by Progetto God of War looks to be mostly a manual rework from the ground up. The only texture I've found that is obviously an AI upscale is this background texture shown here. However, by comparing many different scenes, it's obvious that the bulk of these textures are original and not AI upscales. This pack is an aggressive reworking and the difference between the native textures and these textures is significant. This pack will also censor various scenes in the game, which could be a plus or minus depending on your preferences. I do recommend this pack, but there are three downsides. At the time of recording, it's not finished and is only complete up to the Temple of the Fates. As mentioned, it also drastically changed the look of the game. Subjectively, I love it, but your mileage might vary. And lastly, it makes the game overall much darker. You can use the emulator's post-processing to compensate for this, or you can use reshade. For 
this game, I could not, for the life of me, get the depth buffer to detect properly, which really sucks because otherwise I would have been able to inject RTGI ray trace lighting and that would have taken this to a godlike next level. Pun intended. So I was a bit disappointed, but ultimately I used DPX levels and adaptive sharpening, all tweaked to my personal preference, which I think made it look better. But let's see how it all comes together. Well, brothers and sisters, this is as far as I could push God of War 2 at the time of recording. There are heavy rumors that Sony is going to be releasing a remaster or remake for the Greek trilogy. And if that comes to PC, then I'm sure with mods, it will end up being the way I choose to play in the future. If you'd like to see more gameplay footage with my settings, I do have a settings showcase video for God of War 2. Otherwise, remember to share the good news of the gaming gospel and you shall be blessed. I say these things in the name of Miyamoto the Father, Kojima the Son, and Karmak the Holy Ghost. Amen and enjoy the game games.